to be picked ninth in the Big East, though, in what was supposed to be a rebuilding season, and to now be right near the top of this conference and winning five in a row in a league that could very well send seven to the NCAA tournament, RC, that's Big East Coach of the Year stuff, and it is a coach who had a fire lit under him because people saw him lose to Abilene Christian, and immediately they develop a hot take of, this guy can't get it done. Shaka Smart is here to tell you tonight, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any. I don't think anybody really. You know, if you know Shaka, you didn't doubt him. I, I, I found that hard to believe that people would doubt him. I know the rumors and the whispers out there, but again, I mean, us, us in the in the sport know Texas just has some unrealistic expectations. I don't know when they became a, a national contender. This isn't football with the expectations. I know everything in Texas is supposed to mean more in that aspect, but I mean, he he just got the right fit now. I mean, he's at a program now where basketball is a focus. It's not a football school. He's going to have unlimited resources, and it's just going to be about basketball. No one leads his young men any better than he does. So there's no reason to think that he's not going to succeed. I just think from what happened in Texas, everyone was just assuming that, all right, like, you know, he wasn't the shiny new toy anymore. He didn't have the shiny coming from, you know, VCU that he did coming from Texas now. And so, you know, the expectations were lower. But make no mistake about it. Anyone who was around knew he was going to get this thing going. Maybe not this fast. But I think anyone, everyone kind of knew he got, he's going to have an area to recruit. He got recruiting was never an issue. Getting talent was never an issue. And he's going to get that done at Marquette and going to get it rolling. Hmm. Yeah, no, I was just going to say it's a situation with Shaka where we always talk about, in the, especially in today's landscape of college basketball, kids transferring and needing a change of scenery. I just think it was a time for, for Shaka Smart to get a change of scenery. That goes for coaches as well. So it was a situation where I think both Texas and Shaka himself just needed a change of scenery. And you can see that's working well for them. And I just think this, this Shaka smart team is literally just all Shaka right now. He, you can see the intensity in his eyes. His players want to play for him. It's like one of the beauties and the pure things about college basketball. When you have a team that just wants to play for their coach really hard. I'll say this also, I wondered, will the change in Marquette change the way he recruits philosophy? When he went to Texas, you started seeing him going more for the one and done guys, right? And that was different. Now you're going to get transfers. This seems to fit shock at that aspect. It, no one can build unless you're going to, you, you get into the one and done era. You're going to have to get them every year mm. in order to sustain it. I just felt like getting the transfers in there, maybe mixing a few of those guys in there is the way he'll do it. But in Texas, I thought he went more, the one and done. He got the pros. They just didn't stick around long enough to kind of turn it around the way the expectations were. Justin Lewis goes for 21 points in this game. He'll be coming up on After Dark in this hour. So if you're a Marquette fan, you got to stay tuned for that interview. I was super impressed with, with his answers. And it's hard to go through a coaching transition after your freshman season. I mean, RC, that, that could have been real easy for him to get up and leave. And here, Justin Lewis is a guy that America may be sleeping on. He he has 21-7 and seven tonight against Villanova, who's been defending better as of late. A couple weeks ago against Providence, against a lengthy Providence team, he went for 23-11. and 11. Kid from Baltimore can play, and he's 6'7". He plays bigger than 6'7", but it has the quickness as well. Folks, put it, put it on notice. Justin Lewis is one of the better forwards in this sport right now. He's performing that way, and it – it could have been easy for this to come in a different uniform, and I give the kid props. In a time where everybody's switching their destinations, he stayed. He He's the ultimate example of a guy who bought into what Shaka was selling. This happened pretty quickly, too. I, I thought this was one of the early, you know, the transition from leaving Texas and getting into Marquette. I, I, I think Shaka knew he wanted to get this done to get in there to try to keep some of that talent that he could and get the transfers coming in to try to recruit. So, this, this one didn't linger, you know, linger long. So Shaka getting in there, him staying, didn't come as a surprise. Once Shaka gets in front of you, it's hard to tell him no. Hmm. Yeah, it's, and it's fun seeing Justin Lewis put it together because the talent has always been there, right? Coming into Marquette, people saw the tools, the intangibles he had, and now he's starting to put it together. He's starting to have big games like this on big stages when big-time shots are needed, and those are the moments that you need. And that's why Justin Lewis is going to start becoming a name. I mean, people know him in college basketball, but it's moments like this that you look back on knocking off a Villanova team that's playing really good basketball right now. And you have a game like that. So, uh, you know, I'm happy for him. It's great, you know, to see him get more some more recognition because I think he's a really good player. 
He hit the game-winning shot for the Marquette Golden Eagles, who beat Villanova 57-54. to I'm talking about Justin Lewis, who had 21 points in this win. Justin, take us through that last shot, the game-winner for you and your Golden Eagles. Uh, <clears throat> in the previous huddles, uh, give me the ball. I, mean, I feel like, I feel like uh, I'm unselfish enough to make plays for myself and others. And uh, I mean, I, you got a little hand on it, but I, my, my motive is uh, I'm going to get this shot off. Or if they step up, try to take a charge, I'm, I'm dishing. Because my uh, the shoot, Greg Elliott, my shooter, told me he had me cornered. So. Did you know the shot was going in? That was a difficult shot. Now, you, you, you know, you had one hand on the ground. You guys tripped coming off the dri dribble handoff. Did you have any idea? Of course, you were shooting. Did you think it was going in? I just so I just watched the the highlight. The last the last set dribble helped me kind of get myself together, like take a little breath. And I mean, I just shot it. Justin, for you to go through everything over an off season in which there's a coaching change at Marquette, and, and in no way are we looking against what was happening before, but to now win at the Finneran Pavilion for the first time ever, to win five straight Big East games. What can you say about Shaka Smart and the difference that he's made with Marquette basketball? The way, the way Coach is, the way he, the way he thinks, the way he acts, um, he, he tells us all, all the time, we must act and respond like champions before we do anything. And that's kind of what we, what we carry out each and every day. He challenges, he never lets, like it's never a day goes by where he just let us ease in and tiptoe. Uh, our theme for this game was take the fight to them. And I feel like that's what we did. I mean, we were kind of in the low 50s. That's not usually how we play or want to do. But, I mean, we just stayed and fought the whole way. We were down nine, up up a little bit as well. And we just – we stayed with each other. We looked at each other in the huddle. And I see it in my teammates' eyes that we not let this game slip out of our hands. So. What's been the biggest adjustment for you in this transition with the coach staff? How, and we know that never is the transition easy, right? But what's been the most difficult part of the transition for you? Uh, I don't, I don't really feel like it's been that difficult. You know, I mean, I build the relationship with the guys. They trust me. Uh, I trust them. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's very transactional. I can say how I feel. And they tell me I'm, if, if I sometimes, if, if I'm not, I mean, me and Coach be my peers all the time. He wins all, he wins all the time. But I mean, at the end of the day, he has the best interest at heart for everybody on the team. And I mean, it's just, it's just fun to know that I have somebody that's going to have my back no matter what the result is. So. What was the scene like in the locker room? As soon as I walked in, the guy <laughs> got the water bottles and everything. It was, I just felt good that I could bring this type of joy to my team. And I just want to do for them. And it just feels good when you put it all, leave it all on the floor for your teammates. So, What's your message now, Justin? You're going to be back home on Sunday. You're hosting a top 20 ranked Xavier team. What's your message to Marquette Nation as you return home? I mean, I mean that, it just shows what we're capable of. My message is, um, don't, don't, don't sleep on us. We're, we're, we're a great team, and we have a great leader amongst us, and we're just going to keep fighting and keep proving ourselves. You awoke the nation tonight about Marquette basketball. 13 and six, five straight wins. He is the star. 21 tonight, the hero, Justin Lewis for the Marquette Golden Eagles. Thanks for joining us on After Dark. Thank you.